The tracing table we're about to do is like a tracing table on steroids. We're going to do two tracing tables at the same time, side by side. One of them is going to be from the point of view of the client of our list. The client's the person who's using the Java list type. And the, the client doesn't care how the list is implemented. The client just sees the list as a sequence of elements. You add something to the list, the sequence gets longer. You take something away, the sequence gets shorter. The implementer, on the other hand, sees the guts, the wiring, the partially filled array, all the messy details. So we're going to look what happens in both views when a mere two elements are added to the list. We start out with a list of nine elements. There is the client view on the left. There's some variable list that points to a list object on the heap. To the client, it's just a list, a sequence of elements. But to the implementer, it's so much more. The implementer can see into that list object and see the three fields that are being used to implement it. Elements, the partially filled array, and indeed it is partially filled now as you see. Cells 0 through 8 correspond to the list elements and these are the important cells in our array. Cell 9 does not correspond to anything. It's just waiting to be called upon and put to work to hold something important. Size and capacity are the other fields that the implementer sees. The size of 9 corresponds to the length of the list abstraction. It also tells us that the first nine elements in the array are the important ones. And capacity corresponds to the length of the elements array. It tells us how many elements the list can hold before the array is maxed out and we have to take drastic action. Okay, so the stage is set. Now we want to add J to the end of the list. From the client's perspective, this is easy. In fact, we've done this earlier in the module. We're just going to add j to the end of the list object, and we're done. The list variable is going to be unchanged. It still holds the same reference. But from the implementer's perspective, how do we handle this? How is the state going to change? Do the variables change? Does the array object change? Please pause the video and try to figure out how the implementer's state changes when we add J to the end of the list. Okay, to understand how the state changes, we have to understand what happens during the implementation of the add method. Technically, the first thing we do is make sure we're not trying to add a null value. Uh, this, we obviously aren't trying to do that here, so we can continue. Then, we check if the size of the list equals the capacity of the array. Our answer here is no, 9 does not equal 10, at least not in our mathematical universe. So that means that we can safely add j to the first non-important cell in our array, the last cell, the cell at index 9. Okay, so suppose we do that. Once that's done, if you go back and look at the implementation of add, before we return from the method, we have to increment size. That makes sense since the size of the list has now increased by 1. So when all is said and done, we end up with a tracing table that looks like this. That wasn't too bad, but the next one is going to be a little trickier. Uh, so we want to add k to the list, and we know from the client's perspective that we're simply going to add our new element k to the end of our list object. But what about from the implementer's perspective? 
what do we do now? Please pause the video again and try to figure out what happens this time. This time it's quite a bit trickier. We're not adding null, so there's no problem there. But now we've maxed out our array. Size equals capacity. You remember what we do now? First, we double the capacity. So the capacity becomes 20. All right. Next, we create a brand new array of length capacity. In this case, that's 20, whose first 10 elements are duplicated from the original array. And that's going to look like this. Now we assign that new array to the elements field. And do you remember what gets modified when we do an assignment? If you're thinking the reference value, you're exactly correct. So the reference value, which was pointing to the original array, is now pointing to the new array that we just created. And now we do have the space to add our new element K. So let's do that. And finally, the size must be updated to reflect the new length of the list. Wow, that's a lot of updating. We added an array, updated the reference value to of one of our fields, and updated the integer value of the other two. And what happens to that old array? Well, since elements, the field elements, was the only variable referencing it, Java's garbage collection algorithms, which are constantly running in the background, are eventually going to come along and reclaim that memory space. And this is what the final tracing table looks like. 